everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we are going to learn how to crochet these baby crew socks, which you can see here in the photo as well. I have my smallest size here, which uh, is a zero to six month size. Uh, they are an adorable, simple, single crochet sock that features a little bit of color here up at the top. And uh, this crochet pattern comes in four different sizes. Today in the video, I'm going to work the smallest zero to six month size, but there's also a six to 12 month, 12 to 18 months, and then 18 to 24 months. So for that reason, you may wanna grab a copy of the written crochet pattern, which is on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com. Uh, because uh, the socks can be a little bit more complicated to crochet. Uh, you may want to have a copy of this pattern in front of you as you work through it. For the pattern, I'm going to be using a little bit of the Superwash Merino yarn by Lion Brand. I'm going to use this uh, gray color, uh, which is ice in uh, for my color A, and then a little bit of burgundy for my color B. As far as the amounts, uh, for the largest size, 18 to 24 months, you're going to need about 65 yards of your color A and about five or six yards for your color B. That's for your largest size. So obviously your um, the smaller sizes are, sizes are going to need a lesser amount. For this pattern, you're also going to need a 3.75 millimeter crochet hook as well as a couple of stitch markers, a pair of scissors, and a yarn needle for weaving in your ends. So thank you so much for joining me. I'm so glad that you're here. I invite you to subscribe, take a look around. Uh, this channel is updated weekly with free crochet patterns and stitch tutorials. Now, uh, just one more quick note about our pattern. If you have the written pattern, in front of you, you'll take a look at it. The way I have uh, formatted it is in the brackets throughout the pattern, you will see for which size I am referring to. Now, at parts of the pattern where I'm referring to all sizes, I will write it out as follows. So the first number will be your zero to six months. Your second is your six to 12. Your third number is your 12 to 18 months and your fourth number is your 18 to 24 months. So I recommend going through the pattern, uh, depending on the size that you're making, and just highlight in particular all those numbers and places that apply to you. Uh, as in this pattern, there are some places that only apply to the larger sizes uh, and vice versa for the smaller. So uh, to begin, the pattern is mostly worked in rounds, but there are places that is worked in rows. And uh, this first part of the cuff is one of them. So we're going to start by making a slip knot and we're going to work this ribbing part up here at the top. This sock is worked from the top down to the toe and it's worked all as one piece. So for the ribbing up at the top, of the cuff, you're going to begin by chaining six. Next for row one, you're going to begin by slip stitching into that first stitch and into each stitch all the way across. Now for those of you who do not like to work slip stitch ribbing, I recommend uh, substituting these stitches for single crochet stitches. You'll get the same effect. Uh, the brim just won't be as, as tight. So slip stitch in each stitch all the way across. Once you come to the end of your row one, you can chain one and turn your work. We're now going to slip stitch back across but what we're going to do is we're going to work in our back loop only. When you take a look at the top of your stitch, as I am here, you'll see this nice little V, and your back loop only is the horizontal bar that's furthest away from you. So when we're working this ribbing, we're going to insert our hook under that back loop only, 
and slip stitch across. It's a little finicky to start off because the yarn is a little bit thinner. This is a lightweight yarn, but as it gets longer, it gets easier. So at the end of row two, you can chain one and turn your work. You're now going to repeat row two. So slip stitch in the back loop only of each stitch all the way across. And you're going to repeat that until uh, your cuff work from the beginning measures approximately five inches. Now again, this is just for that smaller zero to six month size. If you'd like to work the other sizes, I can go ahead and check out that written pattern on ridgetexturescrochet.com. So continue to work your uh, ribbing until it reaches five inches and uh, then meet me back here and we'll move on to the next part. Once you have worked your cuff to five inches and that's five inches when it's not stretched out, you'll have something that looks like this. I'll have quite a little bit of bounce to it. What you're going to want to do is uh, chain one and you're going to fold your cuff over so that the two shorter ends meet. Make sure that it's not twisted at all. You're then going to slip stitch working through both thicknesses, working in the back loop only of each side, and you're going to slip stitch across. So simply work five slip stitches, the back loop only working through both thicknesses, both sides, all the way across and this is going to uh, just secure those two sides and join them together to make the top cuff. Once you come all the way across you can turn your cuff right side out. Let's see if I can get my, there we go. Like so. And you're going to chain one. We're now going to begin working in rounds and we're going to be working in continuous rounds. So we're not going to be joining at the end of each round. So you'll want to have your stitch marker handy. For round one, you're going to evenly work 25 single crochet stitches all the way around. Now there's no pretty places to put your stitches so you're just placing them wherever is comfortable. If it helps you can place your stitch marker halfway around temporarily uh, and then work half the stitches on one side half on the other. Whatever helps you to get these even. So for our zero to six month size we're going to work 25 single crochet stitches. When I'm working them, I just like to come down a couple, a little ways into the top of the cuff just to make sure that these single crochet stitches are quite uh, secure around the top. So there's three, four, five. I'll just continue working around here. And we're going for a total of 25. and I'm all about halfway around.
25. When you come around, you're not going to join with a slip stitch. And actually for this smaller stitch, we're going to want to switch now to our color B. To switch to your color B, I'm going to pull some out here. To switch to your color B, you're actually going to just go back a step in your last single crochet. You want to be at the point where you have two loops on your hook worked in your color A. You can then drop that color A, actually pick up your color B and place it on your hook and draw it through. And that's going to join that color B for you. Next round, you are going to work using your color B, you're going to single crochet into each stitch all the way around. So we're not joining, so you're simply going to work your first stitch in your color B uh, into that first stitch there. And then take your stitch marker and just mark that first stitch. Now here it's kind of easy to see where your first stitch is because you're changing colors, but later on it might not be as apparent. So mark that first stitch and then you can continue uh, single crocheting in each stitch all the way around for your round two. So I've come all the way around working my first round in my color B. For the next round, you're going to repeat. You're going to, using your color B, single crochet in each stitch all the way around. So work that first stitch. Don't forget to replace your stitch marker. And you'll notice that my color A, I haven't actually fastened it off. I've actually left it attached there because I'm going to, at the end of this round, pick it up once again. So at the end of this round, you're going to switch back to your color A in that final stitch. Now I'm coming up on the final, that second round, the final stitch of my color B. I want to switch back to my color A, so I yarn over in my color B, uh, draw up a loop, can drop that color B, and again, do not fasten off because you will be going back to it very shortly. I'm going to place my color A back on my hook and then draw it through. You're now going to work one round in your color A, and at the end of this round, switch back again to your color B. I've worked one round in my color A and I'll switch back to my color B here, which is still attached like so. And next you're going to work two more rounds of your color B and then switch back to the color A in the final stitch. So go ahead and work two more rounds of single crochet stitches in your color B and at the end of that second round, switch back to your color A. At that time, you can fasten off and weave in the ends uh, of your color B. So I finished my second round of color there. So you should have the top of your sock that looks like this. I have switched back to my color A. Next, for your zero to six month size, you're now going to continue working in color A and you're going to work a total of five rounds of single crochet stitches. So single crochet in each stitch all the way around for a total of five more rounds. You're working in continuous rounds, so remember to move your stitch marker up as you are working uh, along.
Once you have worked your five rounds of single crochet stitches in your color A, uh, your little sock should look just like this. It's now time to begin to form the heel. And the technique that I'm using is uh, by creating a heel flap and then you shape the heel inward. Uh, I like it just because it gives a very defined heel. It's worked all as one piece. Uh, so there's no sewing or anything like that. So what you're going to do is you can remove your stitch marker because we're going to work this part of the heel in rows. And you're going to begin by single crocheting into each of the next five stitches. So one, two, three, four, and five chain one and then turn your work for row two you're going to single crochet into each of the next uh, 10 single crochet stitches so there's one two three And then two more for my 10, 9, and 10. So single crochet in each of the next 10 stitches. Now for rows 3 through to 6, so for 4 more rows, you're going to single chain 1, turn your work, and single crochet in each stitch all the way across. So work four more rows of single crochet stitches. Single crochet in each stitch, chain one and turn. Do that four more times and then meet me back here. Once you have worked your four more rows of single crochet stitches, your piece should look a little bit like this. We're now going to start to shape the bottom of our heel. So to begin, you're going to chain one and turn your work. For the heel shaping, we're going to begin by working one single crochet in each of the next six stitches. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Chain one and turn your work, leaving those remaining stitches unworked. Next, you're going to work a single crochet in each of the next three stitches. Chain one and turn your work. For row three, you're going to single crochet in each of the uh, first two stitches. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Our next stitch is going to be a single crochet two together stitch and it's going to be worked over this next stitch in the row we're working in and the next stitch two rows below. So to work your single crochet two together you're going to insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over and drop a loop. You're now going to jump down into the next stitch working two rows below, insert your hook, yarn over, draw up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over, and pull through all three. You're then going to finish by single crocheting into the next stitch. For row four, of your heel shaping. You're going to turn your work, 
single crochet into each of the first three stitches. Next, single crochet two together, working over the next stitch, and then jumping down two rows below into the next stitch, yarn over and drop a loop, yarn over and pull through all three loops. Single crochet into the next stitch, and turn your work. For row five, you're going to single crochet into each of the first four stitches. Single crochet two together, working in that next stitch and into the next stitch down below. Single crochet two together then single crochet into that next stitch and turn your work. For row six, we're going to single crochet into each of the next five stitches. Single crochet two together in that next stitch. This one's a little tight. There we go. And into the stitch down below. Yarn over and pull through. There's uh, no stitch to work a single crochet there on the bottom. You're then going to chain one and turn your work. So you should now see that you've shaped your heel quite nicely and we're going to begin working the rounds of our foot now. So you've chained one, you've turned your work, you're going to want to grab a hold of that stitch marker again. What we're going to do is we're going to begin working in rounds, working around the foot of our sock. So what you're going to do to begin is you're going to single crochet in each of the first six stitches and I would just place my stitch marker right there at the beginning in that first stitch. So single crochet in each of those first six stitches. You've now come to the side of your heel and you're going to evenly work five single crochet stitches down the side of your heel. So there's no pretty places to work to insert your hook. So you're just working as you feel comfortable, five stitches down the side. There's two, three, four, and five. Once you've worked your five stitches, you're going to work three, a single crochet three together. So to work your th single crochet three together, you're going to insert your hook. You should have a little bit of space there left on the heel flap. Insert your hook uh, into the side of your heel, yarn over, draw a loop. Next, insert your hook into the space where the heel flap joins with the cuff right there in the corner, yarn over and draw up a loop. Next, insert your hook into the next stitch on the cuff, yarn over and draw up a loop. You'll have four loops on your hook for your single crochet three together, yarn over and pull through all four. You're going to want to pull this stitch fairly tight each time so that there's no gaps in the corner here of your sock. Once you've worked your three together, you're then going to single crochet in each of the next 13 stitches on your cuff. So single crochet in the next 13 stitches. That's 
that's number 10. And you should have one stitch remaining. You're now going to work a single crochet three together. First, inserting your hook in the next stitch on the cuff, yarn over, drop a loop, insert your hook into that little space where your heel flap joins with your cuff, yarn over and drop a loop, and then insert your hook into a space uh, low there on the heel flap, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through all four loops, and make sure it's fairly tight. You're then going to evenly work five more single crochet stitches up the side of your heel flap. And that brings you to the end of this first round of your foot. For round two, you're going to remove your stitch marker. You're going to begin by working a single crochet into each of the first six stitches. Don't forget to put your stitch marker back on. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Next, work one single crochet in each of the next four stitches down the side of your heel. Single crochet three together over the next three stitches. Now working along that cuff, uh, you're going to single crochet in each of the next 11 stitches. Once you've single crocheted in each of the next 11 stitches, you're going to single crochet three together. And then single crochet in each of the final four single crochet stitches up the side of your heel. That brings you to the end of your round two. Your round three, if you're following the written crochet pattern, you're going to jump down to that spot that says for zero to six months only. For round three, you're going to begin by working a single crochet in each of those six stitches across the top. single crochet in each of the next four stitches. And this time we're going to single crochet two together over the next two stitches.
single crochet in each of the next nine stitches. single crochet two together oh. and then single crochet in each of the final four stitches at the end of this round you should have a total of 25 stitches all the way around. I'm just going to put my stitch marker back in there. And that brings us to the end of the sort of shaping decrease rounds. At the end of that third round for our zero to six month size, we're now going to continue working in continuous rounds. So keep that stitch marker handy. And we're going to single crochet in each stitch all the way around for a total of 14 more rounds. So now we are working along the bottom of our foot. You're going to single crochet in uh, each stitch all the way around for a total of 14 more rounds. If it helps, you may want to grab your second stitch marker so that you can leave the one stitch marker in so you know where the first round is. But you want to work a total of 14 rounds of a single crochet in each stitch uh, all the way around and then, uh, and then meet me back here. Okay, so once you have worked the 14 rounds uh, of single crochet for your foot, you should have something that looks like this. And uh, for your sock, you're now in the home stretch as we approach the toe. For the toe of your sock, you're going to start by uh, flattening out the sock and we're going to kind of lay it on a flat surface so that the heel of your sock is down. You want it down, you want to flatten it out like this, and you're going to move your stitch markers if necessary to the two sides of your foot. So my one stitch marker is already uh, kind of placed in the right spot. I'm then just going to just take my other stitch marker and mark the other side as well. For your toe, when you are working the toe of your sock, every time you reach a stitch marker you're going to work a single crochet two together into that stitch so if uh if your hook wasn't quite at the place where your first stitch marker is like mine you're going to single crochet in each stitch across to your stitch marker when you come to your stitch marker work a single crochet two together so into that next stitch, insert your hook, yarn over, drop a loop, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over and draw through all three loops. And then remember to replace your stitch marker. You're then going to single crochet into each stitch all the way across or around to your next stitch marker, like so. When you come to your next stitch marker, You can remove it and then work a single crochet two together over those next two stitches. 
and replace your stitch marker. Next, single crochet in each stitch all the way around to the next stitch marker, single crochet two together, and so on. You're going to find that your sock foot is decreasing by twos in size. So you're going to continue to work these decreases uh, until your sock uh, has only 14 or 13, it's not too, too important, but 13 or 14 uh, stitches left in the toe. When you get to that point, you're going to just simply join with a slip stitch into the next stitch on your toe. So go ahead, continue working the single crochet, two together decreases uh, of your toe until you have 13 or 14 stitches left, and then meet me back here. Okay, so I'm down to about uh, 14 stitches there. Around the toe of my sock, I'm going to join with a slip stitch into that first, st or into that next stitch. And you can fasten off. Now when you fasten off, you're going to want to leave a little bit of a long tail on your sock. You can then remove your other stitch marker and we're now going to sew the end of our sock closed. So what I recommend you do is turn your sock inside out bring it down so that the toe is exposed and just pull that long tail through. You can then thread it on to the end of your yarn needle. And then for my sock, making sure again that that heel is down and flat so that it doesn't make an awkward seam at the tip of your toe. I then just simply took my yarn needle and just did a quick stitch, quick seam through the tip of my toe. So I'm working through both thicknesses, making sure it's fairly secure. All the way across. like so. When you come to the end, it's up to you. I like to make it a little bit more secure and I'll just tie a quick knot at the end and then I'll weave my end back through before I trim it off. You can then turn your sock right, ba uh, right side back out weave in any ends that might be still uh, visible there. I'll just tuck these in for now. And then for baby's socks, if, uh, if you can find it, you may want to grab a product such as this one, which is called Sock Stop. And uh, it just creates the little sticky dots on the bottom of your sock so that uh, babies and toddlers who are learning to walk, uh, the wool sock is not as slippery. So then you can just apply sock stop to the bottom of your sock uh, as per the directions. But that's it. That's all there is to making your little baby crew socks. Once again, uh, this is the zero to six month size and you can find the um, measurements and stitch counts for the larger sizes on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com. The direct link is in the description of this video there for you or in the cards here at the end of this video. So thank you so much for joining me and uh, I look forward to seeing you again next time for another great crochet stitch tutorial uh, or crochet pattern. Until then, happy crocheting. Bye.